Hey everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and today I'm here to talk to you about critiquing your photographs. I had a bunch of you send me your photographs, and thank you for that, by the way. And so what I'm going to be doing is going step about eight, I think we have about 18 of them, and we're just going to show you what I would do if I'm having these design issues or design in how I'm going to design these photographs to be paintings. And so we'll just go through each, I think we have about 18 of them. So it'll take a little bit, but I think this is very important when it comes to designing your photographs. And a lot of students come to me with their photographs and they're like, oh, what do I do with this? How do I make this a really nice painting? Well, again, with this Notan that we're talking about this whole last three weeks, we're talking about designing. And so it's pretty much the first step when I go to design my photographs or my paintings, I do a thumbnail sketch, or if I'm not a thumbnail sketch, I look at it in um, a black and white, and I try to do the black and white um, design thing we've been talking about in the last two weeks. But let's just go right to it here. And so we'll just start out with this one right here. We're going to start with this painting. Or, I mean, <laughs> this photograph. So this photograph is of a butterfly, and it's uh, you know, let's not look at the color when you're first looking at the object. A lot of times when you're looking at the photograph, you're looking at the color and it's like, it's, it makes it beautiful, right? And so we will not, when it comes to designing the thing though, designing the painting from this photograph, we want to look at the black and white. And again, I always posterize it down to black and white. And so if you're looking at this image right here, um, you'll see that the butterfly is dark, right? And because when I pushed it down to where it's a black and white scene, then, and I, when I, I posterize it basically is what I'm doing, and I'm cutting out and assigning my middle tone colors to either a black or a white. Does not mean that you paint it black and white, it just means that this is the design between the lights and the darks. So this butterfly is basically the, a lot of it is middle tone, but I put it into more of the dark part of the design. And the background is also a lot of middle tones back here, right? It's not black. We're not going to be painting it black, but this is, shows me that these are my darks. And so then when I go paint my middle tone, which happens to be pushed towards the dark, I want to make sure that those middle tones are not as light as the light, the lightest light or the darkest light because they have to be separated. They have to be separated from your light and dark, and sometimes they can be separated by color also. But in the design element of Notan, we want to do it so that you just see the black and white. So here the butterfly is the black, and the background is the black. Even though, again, these are middle tones, because if you paint it with a middle tone, these middle tones have to be darker than my darkest light area. All right, so this one would be Perfect, nothing I have to do to this one. This one, I think the center of interest is right in the perfect spot for the thirds. Usually it's in the thirds. So everything about that painting really works out well. So let's go to number two. And that photograph, I mean. <laughs> so number two here is um, a scene, uh, a sunset scene, beautiful scene. Uh, I love the colors in the scene. But again, we have to first look at the black and white. So I turn to black and white. And so let me just... Um, So I take in the lights kind of go from here through this area and basically um, are separated from the black. And I noticed what I did on this one, I didn't make it all black and white. I left some of the middle tones because some of this is gonna be colored. So I kind of cheated on this one in a way because I didn't turn these clouds black, black and white because they can be both, they can probably be both either in the light or the dark. And so this middle tone is the background. So I could actually keep these middle tones to the back and then still make a good design because my, my darkest darks are just in the front here. So these middle tones, and yes, it's having a couple of these really, really dark clouds. They can make kind of neat, but they can, I can consider these to be a middle tone maybe in the light. And so I'll push them to light, even though you would still make them medium. So that means that, so when I'm painting this again, it would be that this is my darks. And if my darks were not black, but just a color, you know, let's say I made this green a little bit lighter than this, then I have to make sure that everything that's in this light area and even the middle tone that's part of the light will be staying lighter than these darks. The darkest light has to be uh, um, lighter than the 
um, <laughs> the light is dark. You have to separate them. Uh, you know, that's how come we're dividing between the black and white and assigning the middle tones to a certain element of your composition, your design. Let's keep on going. I think if we keep on going, you'll get the under picture and the reason why I do this. <laughs> Here's another scene, and this scene is of the boat. Now, when I'm looking at this scene and I look at the black and white, the color, you know, separates the boat here from like a lot of this, and there's a lot of neat things in here, like this red line that bring it forward. But um, the thing that bugs me on this piece is that the boat is kind of like part of the background, the same color as the part of the background, and it is part of the foreground. And we do have it sitting in front and overlapping this building back here, but I don't particularly like the composition of this. I'm not sure why, it just doesn't feel. And that's a lot of to do with when you're designing and looking at the black and white. Does it feel good? Does it feel like um, there's no tangents? And actually there is a tangent right here where the boat hits the edge of the edge of the scene. And let me just show you. Hold on one second, I forgot to look at this. And so right here, this is a tangent right there where it hits the side of the wall. And, um, you know, this is not tangent, but it could be close to tangent. So it's just the placement of this boat in particular makes it so important because it is a center of interest, but I don't like the shape of it, how it's coming forward like that. I like these boats a lot back here. And so maybe if this boat was in a different angle or a different position, maybe right side up with, you know, I'm not sure. It's just... To me, the lights and darks and the color of all this and even the composition of it just kind of bugged me with this boat. That could be a personal thing too. <laughs> but I always like to look at it and then I look at it black and white. And by making this light, the light area of the boat, then maybe the background, maybe this color here. Where's my pointer? I'll get my pointer. Maybe the color here. Um, the values here shouldn't be the same as the boat. Maybe the, this back here should be darker so that the boat then pops forward and doesn't look like part of the background either. Uh, just maybe something, maybe there's all this light up here doesn't, doesn't help it out by making the boat look like it's in part of the background too. So I'm not sure if that's what a part of it is, but I, I would not be, probably not paint this the way it is. Um, you could maybe at least maybe crop this off so it's not right on there or bring it out a little bit more, add it more this way. And then just this whole angle of this boat here, this shape, geometric shape, is kind of just flat. It doesn't look like it proceeds backwards. So I'd have to do something to make something from light to dark or something, or maybe make this all this boat light and then this background grasses are darker. So something like that, but I just, it almost seems like two pictures. I'd rather maybe just paint it horizontally back here and crop it so that I just see the background here, this little area, and make this boat push it smaller and put it to the side or something. That's just my personal taste. Um, you know, so again, I'm looking at the black and white and determining if I like to actually see the big composition of the black and white together design wise and this one I don't really enjoy that much <laughs> sorry um, number this next one come on number four is a, um, a, a person and um, I actually like it I think um, you have to again look at the big lights and darks and when you they see things like the legs down here and you see this leg is over here something seems wrong like it's like she's pushed over but she's leaning against this but by making it dark and i would actually probably make it pretty dark so that i wouldn't see part of the where the legs are and keep it so like distorted a little bit so that it focus again on the head and the face and so that would give me a good composition too having this dark and then these this wall and the, and the tops of these light so I think it actually feels really well here. It, it works out really well. Um, I wouldn't color the differences of the pink compared to the, the colors I would maybe shift it off a little bit. And um, I do like the fact that this is, I kind of like all dark down here and the area in the bottom here. I forget, keep on forgetting to use my pointer, sorry about that. So down here, I kind of like that it's uh, uh, not seeing through and not seeing the ground that you see back here. I kind of like it. I would push it back and make it all 
the same darkness and make that soft edge and focus again more on the hand and the face then so that these things don't have to be as important. And I would probably even make me not make this dark, dark right here. Excuse me, you know, make that as dark up there. Um, I would maybe just make this lighter again and maybe even this area because you don't want to have too many things disturb that light and dark pattern. And, and that's keeping it simple is always the best. Let me really quickly make this pointer a color <laughs> because I think we're having a hard time seeing this. And so let's just do this real quick. Sorry about this. So now I have a color pointer. Uh, actually, then now I go next one. It's not going to be that color. Oh, well, sorry about that. Right there. Oh, it does change. Okay. This is great. <laughs> so the next one here is a very high key, high key photograph. So this photograph is very, very high key. And so the fact that it doesn't have a really a lot of dark darks. So when you're turning it um, black and white, it's either black, the whole system, the whole painting is either black or it's all white, right? And so because this is a high key, this is not much different from this light, the, the, the foreground. If I really stretch it, if I really stretch it to where I wanna make it dark, then this would be my darkest dark and the house, the building and the grass would be the darkest dark. This up here, sky is about the same value as this. And so this is what you would get when you're really stretching it. Um, that's not to say that this is the way you're going to paint it again. You're not going to paint it this way. But if you keep then these darks in that darkness and keep the sky in this darkness, then I think it would kind of work. And um, so then I would maybe the light here of the green could be there. But I would definitely make the house the building maybe a little bit more contrasty and again if you want to keep it this light that's fine um, just maybe up the, the darkness of the building just slightly and keep these lights lighter than the darkest dark or the lightest dark you know you guys still separate them and so this is a dark doesn't have to be black but this this in the building can maybe be a little bit darker i would give it this more contrast to this building just so that it has like a substance to look at so keep it high key, it's fine. You can start with like your darkest dark being a number five value, but then make sure that this house has a little bit of that dark value in it and also some detailed darks in there. So pushing that to be our darks and then the rest, make sure it keeps a light underneath a four value. And I would say go from like your darks are being a four and a um, five and then everything three to one would be the lights. And um, don't separate those keep it light like that but do separate the 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 dark from the light and not meaning black because you're only going to about a five value all right i'm hoping this is all making sense um it just is the easy way of creating the design element of your painting it's not about you're making this black to paint it black it's just to show you what parts are going to be looking the darkest and how it looks against the light area. Here we have a scene, a colored scene of a, you know, uh, the sun's going down, but the sky is not warm with reds and stuff. But uh, this picture, when it comes to composing it, now when it comes to the black and white, it's kind of separated pretty nicely. But in compositionally, if we're thinking about composition, not about design composition, but just design, between the blacks and the whites that's fine but when it comes to composing with your center of interest and all that kind of thing this needs to have something that needs to be more important than the other so we have these two boats and they're fighting for being the center of interest and they're not in the area of center of interest usually are at so usually you put them in the center of interest in your one-thirds area and so the, what does that mean that means somewhere in this area or this area and so we're almost cutting this picture right down the center when it comes to com composition. Not so much design. Design is kind of like the background's light and the foreground's dark. And so the design is for the for the black and white is perfectly fine. It's a pretty fine picture when it comes to the, the lights and darks. It's simplified lights and darks, and I really like the lights and darks. But now we're going into composition, and it's a little bit different. There we have to decide where the center of interest is and put them into the area. So this is one that I wanted to show this one only because the design element of this is fine, but the composition of it is not so great because we don't have that center of interest to be in those area where you want to kind of wade in. 
right now this picture i could cut it in half and then i make two great pictures good two great paintings I wonder if I can do that somehow. No. Nope. <laughs> um, so if I took and I cut this picture right in half here, then it would make this boat the center of interest and it would put it into one thirds area. But by having them both together, I'm kind of cutting this right down the center. And so each one is more is just as important as the other. This way, if I cut it right here, then I can make this the center of interest. It's in the one third area. And so that's great, you know. But again, together. It makes a great design, but not a good composition when it comes to designing the, um, let's say if there was a boat right here, another boat, a third boat, which is actually pretty good too. It's another thing, a big boat and a small boat, or take this boat, move it out to this area. Like bring this boat out here and don't let it line up with the um, edge of the picture, but bring it out here, bring it out here. Then it would be perfectly fine because the background's light and the foreground's dark. Now also this dark line you have back here and the solid line and the shoreline way back there, I would tone that and make that part of the light scene of the design of it, the light part, because that push that back, let that be part of the light. And then there's all the foreground is dark, the whole foreground, everything in the foreground is dark. That's very much what Thomas Schaller does on all his paintings. Most of his paintings are the foreground's dark and the background's light. It's a very simple design design of the lights and darks not design of the composition composition comes with the center of interest and all that kind of stuff that would have to push this boat out to this area to make it a better composition i hope that makes sense also because <laughs> i really want you to realize that composition is not always just about the design of the light and darks we're designing this last three weeks we've been talking about designing the lights and dark pattern and that doesn't have to do with the composition as where your the center of interest is and that kind of thing. That's another whole other element of composition and design. But we've been talking about just designing first off the designing of your lights and darks, the new tan. That's what we're, we're talking about these last couple of weeks. And I, if I keep on talking about it, I figure we're going to learn something. <laughs> so here we have um, this beautiful scene. Again, this scene is a waterfall and there's a lot of substance here in a lot of things happening in this scene you have the white water and then you have the light leaves and then you have the darkness that's the rocks and some of the darkness uh, between the rocks and such so if you turn it black and white you can um i, I made this black and white but i made it a little bit towards the light one time over here and i took it so i made more of the light areas light I'm deciding where the middle tones are basically going because most of the scene here on the outer side is middle tone. So where do I put it? Where do I put it towards the light or do I do it to the dark? Um, you tell me here. So I made it so that, that, that these middle tones now are in the light. So making these middle tones light makes it very textury because there's a lot of little darks in here too. So then that would overall be the light area. And then the rocks themselves, the light part of the rocks would also be light. So does that work? That we, I mean, you can have color then that'll help it out, but does the design of this work better? Or do you want to do where you leave the middle tones more towards the dark? Uh, both of these are more towards the middle tones are towards the dark. This is a really dark so that my leaves would be really dark. Um, and then you just have a light on the center, which is not bad because then you have a really decent composition because you just have the light against the big dark. And this is kind of like what this is also, but because of making the middle tones not quite as dark and some of the leaves being light, then you have a little dappled light. And so basically I think if I were to do this one, I would do it in this aspect. I would do it where I'd make it the, the leaves into the dark, but some of these leaves could be into the light. So have it kind of dappled and the color could also be a thing, but most of this is in the dark. I would make most of this in the dark and then up the light of the few little lights that you have here, the leaves that are in the foreground, and even a bunch of these leaves up here, I would make those a little bit lighter, but have more of this area here dark so that it'll pop my waterfall. And this is how I think when you're, that's what you're going to think about when you are making these things black and white. Because a lot of times when you're doing overcast like this, what happens is that you're getting the local color of objects to make it light or dark. And it's not about the sunlight hitting something and the shading. That's not where you're getting your pattern. You're getting your pattern from your lar 
uh, local color of the objects. And these objects are light green. And so do you make them light, part of the light scene, or do you make it part of the um, dark scene? And, and you can make them light, but then they're gonna be very dappled, which is okay. That's fine. It's a texture. And so I think I would suggest this one. If you're going to go with one, I would take this one. This one it seems a little bit too dark, the leaves. It still work. This one would also work, but there's going to be so much things affecting your light of the waterfall that the waterfall may not be seen, looking like the center of interest anymore because it's just white. And then these are going to be really light, just as light as the, or not as light as the waterfall, but... I think there's just a little bit too much texture, too much going on there, where this is a little bit less going on between your lights and darks, and you can make texture up there really easily. All right, onward. Sorry, this is taking so long, but this is very important. I really, really have to bring this across to you because I do this to every picture. Here, one of the ladies, um, I think it's the lady in here, who sent me these photographs. I think she was riding her horse through the water here. And she had already turned some things black and white. She turned them grayscale, not black and white. But I like to turn them um, black and white instead of just grayscale because grayscale still doesn't, it doesn't determine where your medium lights and darks are going to go. So here, if you look at the colored version of this, again, the colored version, a lot of times is it'll show things like the light of these leaves back here and stuff. And... And so what I did is I took them down so far that they turned almost dark. I made them, I made them part of the dark so that I can just make my simplified composition between black and white simpler. I mean, if I start putting all this little foliage in there and making all that dark and black and white, then I'm losing the, um, the, the, the stream of water, splashing water. This is a much better splashing water than if I had all this back here too, all this uh, black and white back there too, besides this black and white, it would almost be too much of that. And so I'm going to keep that down a little bit. I can still make it somewhat, you know, textury back there and make those darks in there, but just don't make it as contrasty as it is back here. And when it comes to, you know, cropping in your picture, that's part of the composition too. Either one of these compositions I think works. Um, she had... Um, cropped it like this and thought that was a better thing and yes it is good but I think this is just as good I think this can be just as well done having it horizontal as vertical you know you just have to look at the picture and see where your black and white are black and white design elements are now one thing I don't like about some of these is the horse the light of the horse kind of when you go to do the painting the horse's face is light and so is the person's you know, arm here and stuff when it then, but you see here in the colored version that this is a color. So that's a light color. So that's where you then would eliminate the fact that the horse separates from the person and it doesn't look like the, the person's body. So just get, always think that it may be the same lightness, but don't think of it as that it still has to be the same lightness in the picture it's just that's part of the light but it can be a the middle tone can be towards the light of a color that separates the horse's head from the person's body so you're still making it light but you then use that's where you use the color to separate all right very simple um taking and directing your color sometimes to a value also like these greens i'm just saying that these greens are going to be darker than anything else in the foreground as you can see I'm just wanting to make that and I could push that with the Photoshop. I can just push it by posterizing it. It just automatically goes back because it seems like that's different from the lights that you have here splashing. All right. And you can adjust that uh, many different ways and then just look at the photograph and look at this and does that look good? Does it have a good sense you know, of design between the big, big lights and big darks? Now composing it again, composition, you know, if I keep her centered like this, right in the center, I probably want her off center a little bit, right? So I would probably crop this off here a little bit, you know, but again, I'm not talking totally about composition here. I'm talking about the big values of light and dark, which is part of your composition, yes. But at first you want to do is look at between the big lights and darks, and then you can do the changes like I'm suggesting here is take and crop this picture so that she's not quite in the center, unless you want it formal. And that's a whole other thing. Formal composition. This is a formal composition right here. And whatever is on one side is on the other side. It's right in the middle. It's an okay composition. It's not bad. You can do that. And there's another way of that 
George O'Keefe used that a lot, or just make it off center a little bit, then you make it unformal. Very simple. Either way works though. Either way is fine. I kind of like informal more than formal, but that's just me. Again, everybody's there to their own own liking. This one, um, when it comes to the light and dark pattern, you have to make a couple of decisions here because there's a lot of gray, there's a lot of middle tone. And so you have to decide which which way that middle tone is gonna go. Again, does that middle tone go towards the dark or does it go towards the light? And so I did it twice. I took some of the middle tone, I took to the light. So this I took this middle tone and made it light. And so then it is about the same as these flowers. So it has the middle tone going through this way. Or if you make this building go towards the dark, then these make the plant jump out a little bit more at you. Um, I think if I were doing this painting for composition purposes wise though, I would probably add something to it. Um, it feels like if I'm gonna be doing these just to show these flowers, then I would maybe crop in a little bit more or I would use this so that the dark is behind this the area. Like this middle tone back here, I make it into the dark like this image so that it pops the flowers out more and put more emphasis on these flowers and then maybe also take this area and diffuse it. Make it just um, simplify it and push it towards the back and maybe don't make it this contrasty and that's another thing. We're not talking about com contrasty lights and darks when it comes to doing the black and white. That we can do in the composition end of it. So I would say that I would, if I'm doing this one, I would probably do this scene right here and push this back. But I would add, I think, a person here. I would have a person looking at these flowers. I think it would be neat, really neat to put a person right here. And he would be dark, dark silhouetted against this. Like I would put it right there and make him looking at the flower, smelling the flower. Maybe a little girl can smell the flower. Or maybe there's just something here that's more important because right now the center of interest is fighting with this building and so i want to make it either the flowers which you can do here with this dark but i think this then is too dark back here so a combination between both of these would be what i would do on this and i would probably if i'm just doing the flowers with no person i would do this where i'd make this background dark popping these forward and i would crop this in a little bit right here and crop that down a little bit and then push it and then Put a person in <laughs> the definitely then the person's head could be light and the or or make it like this and make the person dark against the light background something one or the other but that's the problem you get when you're having a scene like this where you're using local color for your values this is local color there's no there's no sunlight direct sunlight on here so you're going to be using local color for your values and this is a middle value and I, like I always say, you got to shift it to one or the other. Is it going to be part of your dark or is it part of your light? And so um, I think it would have to be put to your dark if you're making this your most center of interest. Because these are your lightest lights, right? The flowers are lightest light and so is the sky. And the middle tone here of the building can be pushed either way. Even the sidewalk. The sidewalk can be pushed either way. Look at it. It's dark over here, light over here. All right. I would probably never even paint this. I would take another shot of this and do it during sunlight because you can probably get another shot. But that's beside the point though, because the person had asked me if they could paint this. And yes, you can, but you have to do some changing and you have some thinking about it. All right, we better keep on going here. <laughs> this picture just, um, I felt was just perfect. There's nothing you need to do with this one. This one, if you look at it, you just see that all the objects are darker and everything else around it is lighter. Very simple composition. If you look, these are the objects, the people, and the building. And if I make them black and white, the sand could be the light, white. I, would, I should have done it where I just blur, blurred out. But even the footsteps in this tracks can be dark. And um, their middle tones, the middle tone can be more towards the light. Or I could even make this middle tone towards the dark and it would still work because I have a big light to a big dark. But I just like that all these, all these, all the people and all the footsteps and all that is in dark and everything else is light. And it works fine. It works absolutely fine. You can also say that this middle tone is part of your dark. And I'll make it very simple because this is the light and this will be the dark. So this middle tone could do it as your darks. And like I said, you don't have to paint it that way. But so this middle tone, 
would make sure that none of this in this area right here would be as as dark as your light, darkest light in this area. Kind of keep it separate, you know, so they have a big light and dark pattern. Big light and dark pattern. Have you heard that a few times from me? <laughs> here we have Galena, Illinois. Um, and I, this person sent me a, bu a bunch of the um, pictures. And so I thought I'd put them all here together in one page. So you don't have to go and do separate pages. So here we'll start with this, the flag one. And let me get my pointer up there towards the top here. And so if you're looking at the flag one, if out of all these, we have three different versions of this. This one, let's go ahead and start with this one. This one is a scene down Galena and a lot of middle tones. And when you get a lot of middle tones, what I tell you, you got to decide if they're black or white. And so I kept this. This is the black version. But if I made the LEDs black, you'd hardly have any white, any lights, really. That you have this building, this building, this building. And so you really wouldn't, if I made these gray tones black, and so I kept a middle tone just to show you what I'm talking about, is that that would be hardly any light. And would that make a great composition? No, not at all. I mean, it's just too much stuff all over the place. Now, if I turn them all white light, if I made these middle tones light, then it would work. Then I think I could do this. I think I could paint this because then the objects down here, like the person, I could move them over a little bit, put them in the light. And some of these cars could be dark against maybe a little bit of light over here. And even the awnings and stuff that would kind of work and that actually the background back here would work also but i wouldn't make it quite as dark dark but that would be part of my dark area back here the blacks would be but i'd push those middle tones towards a dark but closer to the light dark you know separate there's got to be a separation between one to five and then from five to ten and then if you're using a number five or a, a six um dark it's very close to a five light but they still have to be separated you cannot put them together and so this would this background back here would be my lightest dark but it would still be darker than my um darkest light all right so that's one way i would do this scene now this scene is the same as this though though <clears throat> i didn't show you the darkening because here these middle tones would look, if everything is dark, they would be all dark back there. And it wouldn't look that great for design-wise. So this is a much better where I make these buildings all the light, the mediums into the light, background, foreground, it's all light. And it all kind of combines together. Now, my center of interest is way in the background here. And so compositionally, this is a hard one. I wouldn't probably do this one because where is my composition? Where's my center of interest in this one? Um, I just don't have a center of interest. And you can't, I guess you kind of are setting a stage. This is a stage for some center of interest. I can't make this church back here a center of interest. If I do that, then it brings that forward because the center of interest usually has the most contrast, most color, most importance to it. So I'd have to somehow crop this so to make this a little bit more the center of interest. So this would not be a great one. I'd have to find some kind of actor in here. This is a great stage for something like um, a couple walking down the street towards the, towards the church, then that's fine. But that's the background. So be a little bit hard to make this one. And for that reason, I would choose this one because this one is not bad. I would take the pole right here and the flag and that's kind of a the center of interest or area or just and maybe put in some people walking to the car right here. So this scene would be the one out of all these is the one I would paint because this just has the most light and dark um well well done between the lights and darks when it comes to the light and dark pattern and then the composition is much better in the design composition design again can be different um like you saw in the boat scene the composition of it couldn't be bad but the design could be good okay a design between the lights and darks so this design between lights and darks are okay for me i i, I um, like this one and the composition is also good for this one so i would go with that one Come on. Now, when you're doing outside in the woods kind of scenes, when there's no sunlight, you got to take local color again for your black and white. Um, and so that makes it really hard when you don't have shadows, but you're using local color, meaning the color of the object. If you're using that to determine your black and white of your design, then in a scene like this, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of you know, texture, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of texture. It can still work 
and it's great, it can still work, but you have to figure out some way of combining some of these lights and the background darks. See the background darks, these trees back here? These trees back here would, are in the black and white, look like they're coming forward. So, do, and it doesn't make for a great composition if you have black and white all over the place. Again, you wanna simplify it so that maybe these trees back there, those middle tones are more towards the light and then make these dark, dark texture areas, uh, make them darker and make them all together in your front. And so this, I wouldn't paint like this. I would have to do something to it and make it my bigger composition between the lights and dark design. It, it's okay compositionally where the trail goes back here and this tree is your center of interest and that area is your center of interest. It's not so much an object a lot of times, it's an area and this could be the area of interest. And that's fine, but then I would take these trees back here, push them way back and make them all light, make them all part of my light and make more of my foreground here. And even the, even this, this area here, I would make some of this middle tone more towards my dark. So this one would take a lot of work and to designing it so that it would work. And also this tree right in the side, compositionally, I would not put that in because again, that's on the edge of your picture and that's not a good design element or a good composition element. It's okay for designing something dark in this area, but definitely not a good design for composition and keeping um, your, your composition done well and not have this tangent. That's a tangent, having it right against the edge. And so let's go to number 13. We're almost there. This one is a great scene. Um, again, no, it's overcast. So overcast meaning that you're not using direct sunlight and shadow to show your composition. You're using local color again, and meaning that these rocks are dark and everything else, the sky and the ground is light. And it's pretty much what it is. And so their middle tone, there's a lot of middle tone in this. You get a lot of middle tone when it's a lot of um, local color of objects because all these objects are middle tone, uh, like the grass, the rocks and the water. That's all middle tone. So you have to decide you know, does that middle tone go towards the light or dark? And of course you're gonna make it towards the dark because it's darker than your light shoreline here, your um, your ground here in the sky. So you just make those part of your dark scene and see how well that works. And like, again, you don't paint it this dark. And that's the thing I think a lot of people are confusing. And I wanna really bring that across here is that just because we're making them black and white doesn't mean that the scene has to be black and white. It doesn't have to be that dark for the contrast to work. It just means that now these darks that are, are the dark pattern, those have to be darker than the light area. They have to be darker than the darkest light area and it has to separate between that. And it can be done with color also as long as the value is darker than the darkest light. Make sense? Um, keep it separated and look at the design. This is a really great design. Now, where's our center of interest? It's probably this area of interest right here, you know, where all this stuff is happening, this little rock right there. And I would always, oh, me, I always like putting people in there. So I'd be putting people right there. You know, in the thirds, I would just put a person or maybe it could be a person on a horse or whatever. And though it could just be this too. You know, there's naturalists who just want it to look like what it is. The photo, you know, plain air painters would paint there without the people because if there's nobody there, that's what they would paint. Make that the center of interest. But look at the design element. Look at the design between the lights and the darks. Perfect. It's perfect. I wouldn't change a thing for that part. Here we have a night scene, um, an evening scene where it's evening. And so again, where do you put your middle tones? And because in a night scene, the sky in this one is a little bit more middle tone, right? It's very much a middle tone. And so if you're looking at this middle tone, I'm definitely gonna make it in towards the light because that makes a better design. And also the lighting on this house, that's part of the light. And so then I can actually see painting of this. Now, compositionally, um, where's your center of interest? It would be this area here. And so that's kind of cool. But this sign right over here really is kind of disturbing right in the corner. This is not, um, compositionally. So either you bring it in this way a little bit or take it out of this corner, take it out of that corner because I'm looking at that first. And anytime you have wording on your picture, even if there's no words on there and it's a sign and you have it, you want to read it. And so that's the first thing you're going to see. So compositionally, you want to take this away or put it into the scene a little bit. I would just probably take it away, 
but I do like the light part of this. I do like when it comes to designing the lights and darks, I do like to have a little bit of light over this corner. So you make this, maybe, maybe this can be a light, but don't make it a sign. And actually, I think it's a bike and it's a, it's the basket on the bike. And so really, do you want that to be your center of interest or do you want this area to be your center of interest? Definitely this area. So change this to something that is not that because you're, otherwise you see that. That being said, let's say this person who owns this bike wants that there. <laughs> well, then that's fine. Then you have to just make sure that this area, um, you put it in, put it in light, and then make sure this area is more contrasting, more colorful. And maybe it also has a sign over here that's just as powerful as this sign over here. Or like I said, bring this into the picture a little bit more. Bring that bike a little bit more into this area so that it is more important and just bring it in. And that's another way of helping that out. But between the lights and dark design, this is pretty nice. I kind of like this. And again, showing the black and white. And you know, I left a little bit of the middle tone. I'll just show you that Sometimes you just think of the middle tone. I don't, a lot of times if I leave middle tone, it's because I don't know where to put it. You know, especially clouds. A lot of times, does it work with, would these be okay light or should I make them black? And they're middle tone. So they really don't matter so much in the design element of it. So I, if I made this all light, that'd be okay. If I made this dark like this, that's okay too. I don't find that to be distracting. So a lot of times if you see, I keep middle tone in there, that means because I think they can go either way. To some cows and these cows are black cows so I don't have to even change the black and white when it comes to the element of black and white um, design wise it's perfect you know it's fine these dark step back here um, you know I almost think that I should make those into the light and just keep those middle tones so they push them back because I'm not sure I like them so coming so much forward and that's part of the design, but also part of the composition. So compositionally, I would probably push these elements to the middle tone of the light and push them way back. I probably should have done that to show you what I'm talking about, but I would just push this back and make the cows the more important dark element against the light. And the barn could have some darks in here and it's okay. But I think these trees, by having them that dark, it really makes this area right here really important. And the cows are not overlapping that, so... Um, I would maybe tone that down a little bit in value. You know, I bring that down, even though, you know, having, I was showing it black and white, and this, this basically is all white. This middle tone is basically in the white, but if I, I wanted to show you that the texture, I, I would get texture, but that would be considered in my light area. Now, compositionally with the, with this cow, um, I'd probably take them out because then you have two and two is not good and actually, is, that, is, is this the front of him or the back of him? I'm not sure. I think that I, I really can't tell. I haven't looked at it close enough. If that's the back of him, do you really want the, just the back end of a cow in there? Or if you turn him around and put the thing there, then you have two all with their heads right here. I would basically take him out or her out. I would take this cow out and then just have the one cow. And I think it would be a pretty good design between light and dark. It's almost like a yin yang thing too. You can even make the sky darker I think that'd be more contrasty if you make this dark and also make the sky darker. And then you have a really kind of a yin yang thing where the, where the barn is the light against the dark background. And then you have the cow as the dark object against the light foreground. And so that'd be like yin yang, right? The, the, the whole Nutan thing that we're talking about. And so that would be working out too. And it kind of, you could do that really easily by making a dark sky. And that happens. There's dark skies out there. So that's what I would do. So I wouldn't paint it just like this because I don't think it would make a great um, value pattern and composition. Um, so I would definitely change things. But that's how I, that's why I turn them black and white. And that's the reason I look through and sometimes it's not definitive exactly what you should do, um, but it gives you a start. It gives you a place to start with your lights and darks. And it also helps out looking at the composition of things too. Here we have a, this one was kind of complicated for me. <laughs> it took me a while to figure this one out. Um, only because when I turn things light and dark, sometimes you get, again, if you have a middle tone that's interrupting. And so that's what happened here. The, mi the middle tone of these stairs was really interrupting a lot because when I turn it black and white, these darks can either go towards a really dark black and then we have so much black in this picture. And, and really, so I thought I'd make them 
light and but i want to keep them in here a little bit just to show you that they're not taken away but they're i'm going to keep this gray as probably my light so that i kind of separate the light and dark and then i also if you notice here there's a dark right here and i think that's a mailbox on on this post i took that out because it'd be like it's tangent for one on the edge here and also it was a dark and it was just making too many darks and lights all over the place. So I just simplified it, took out that mailbox. Um, I would crop this in a little bit so you don't even see the post of the mailbox. Um, then you can just see the, the light back here. And this would all be light against the dark fence. I would even, I would probably not even put in this little dark right there because I want this, the fence to be dark against the light. And then this side is the light. And I like this dark going right down the center here. Again, simplifying, 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 simplifying. And so then I think it would work. Then I think it would work if you take that out and also make your stairs a part of your light composition. And again, this is a scene that is overcast. And again, you're looking for the local color of objects. And sometimes that's where you can change things. So I know this is green and it'll be lighter, um, but you'd probably have to, if you want this kind of look, this effect of light, you'd have to make that dark a little bit darker than the light areas. So that green would have to be not this, this black, but it would have to be darker than the sidewalk. Because right now the sidewalk and this green are very, very close in values. And so you'd have to separate that. And so when you're working overcast and you're seeing a middle tone like this, where the, where the shadow in this step is about the same shadow as the color green here of the plant, that's the same value. And so you have to decide, and then when you go to paint it green, you cannot make these, you can make it green, it's gonna separate it, but still think about the values. It really is important. Again, you don't have to make it this dark, but you have to make it darker than with the lightest dark, um, the lightest dark in the light area, or the darkest dark in the light area. Oh boy, I'm hoping I'm not confusing you guys. <laughs> Hope this is working, because it's really important I think, and when it comes to designing and starting your design and taking your photographs to hopefully you'll see um, how I think and how I, 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 how I think about the photographs and how I work them. Now here we have a turkey running through the field and um, kind of fun, kind of fun image and it'd be kind of fun to paint this, but you can't paint it like the photograph either. And also I like to take and make them black and white, not only for the reason of the color, <clears throat> or for the value design, but I also like to get rid of the color because you know me in the green, I don't like green very much. So I'm thinking to myself, well, if I make it a different color, will it work with the values? And I know it will if I, if I figure out the value pattern. So what's the biggest problem here is that the end, the back of this turkey lines up with the top of this bush back here and the values between the black and white. And I kept it to where these grays are more towards the gray instead of white because if I if I white them all out the turkey and this bush would be all white and you wouldn't see anything you wouldn't see the turkey so I had to I had to make it light enough to show you that this is part of the light scene so I would definitely make this this area right here this bush I would bring that into the dark I would make that a dark something and I would not line it up with the back of the back of this um, turkey. See the turkey's back lines up to in tangent with the top of the of the bush. So it looks like in the black and white that this is all part of one big animal. Like he's got a big furry chest in front now. But anyways, so basically by just changing this, but now look at, I just said make this darker, but what happens then with right here? Because the turkey himself is darker right here. And the reason it looks good right down here is because that this is dark and light separated. Okay, so maybe maybe you just take this down to about here, take the darks down, make this still a bush, but just take it down to about here. And so that the head will be light against the dark background. So just take the bush down. And I probably again should have done that in Photoshop. I could have just take this, shown you that just bring the bush down here, make that dark, make the everything, just take this whole thing, bring it down to about here. And then the heads will be in the dark and your body will be in the light. And they'll be perfectly fine the way it is. And I would also, again, this is a scene. And, you know, I always tell my students, if you can take pictures when it's sunny out, better. If it's overcast, you're, looking, again, looking for the local color. And so here, I would make this look like the sun's on it by putting a shadow on the ground here. And um, um, it has a little bit of it there, but it's not really because it, it, then it'll push it onto the ground. 
And it, it, that even happens when it's overcast a little bit where you get a little bit of shadowing underneath something because it is light. And so it's just overcast. So it's not direct sunlight. It's just sunlight, but just not directly. So you can still get a little bit of a shadow um, of the turkey onto the ground just to put them onto the ground somewhere. Last one. And so with the last one here, we've got, again, I find that uh, this is something that most people want to paint. Is this, We have a lot of people painting this kind of scene, and it's the hardest when it comes to designing between the lights and darks because everything is metal tone. And so <laughs> when you're doing scenery with leaves and uh, foliage and ground and a ton, a million of things in there, and you're doing it while it's overcast so you don't get direct sunlight between the sunlight and the darkness, then you have to decide in your value pattern and your black and white, which leaves, which area is gonna be dark and which area is gonna be light. This scene, basically, I would take, and I should have done more of this, and I, I'm just gonna explain it to you, is that I would take all this foliage, because it's all green, I would all take it down to a dark Right in the foreground here, I would do this like this this pine tree right here. I would make it darker, and because I'm looking at the center of interest, which is my walkway here, and that's my light, and so I want to make everything that's light my center of interest right here, and then everything around this thing would make dark. So this green I would then consider to be dark, and so that and pattern wise, though these green leaves way in the background here, I background here I probably keep light. So I have a little bit of a, a centralized area back here where that this, this tree right here, that would be light, like the light green here. But then in this foreground, these foreground leaves, I would definitely make a darker green and make it a middle tone that's just slightly light, just slightly darker than my lightest, darkest light, but put them there in the dark pattern. So this would be the dark pattern. This tree definitely would be dark and all the leaves on this tree would definitely be darker. And again, when I say dark, don't think that they have to be black. They don't have to be black or really dark like the black and white that I'm putting together. It just means that this tree, this darks in this tree have to be darker than the darkest light in the light area. You know, so they have to separate those. And that will give me a really nice pattern. I can also just make this one big dark patchy thing where I do a big wash and then just focus in on my, my little bridge here and my walkway. That could be the center of interest to make everything else in this whole area and my great, great tones being dark. And that would still work. That would work really well. Um, this foreground here, I would make it as part of the light. And so you just have a light going right through here. And so basically, I'd have light, 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 and my skylight, and there, all the foliage, all the foliage, and the branches, and everything would be my dark. And that would make a good composition, I'm telling you. But looking at it this way, my, many of my students see too much. And so you got to simplify it in the value pattern. And so I would make all the, it would still be textury when I go to paint it, it would still be textury, but I would, this would make my darks right through here. And this, both sides, they would be all dark. And the only light I would have, my lightest light, and so nothing in this light area would be as dark as the dark, light is dark in my dark area, would be this, the sky and the walkway and the bridge and this foreground right here. That's all. We may have to paint this one. I forget who this picture was. And, um, but if this is your photograph, please let me know if I can use this because we may do this one just to show you because so many people do work like this. And I want to be able to show you uh, maybe on a, um, a Thursday or on a Sunday, I will do this demonstration to show you how, what I mean about this because this is what I get mostly when it comes to designing um, scenes that are overcast in the woods. <laughs> we had one before too, and that, but this, this one's a really nice one because I love this little walkway here. All right, so that was the last one, and um, I'm sorry it took so long to explain all this, but... Um, I hope you're still here with me, and um, if you don't want to, <laughs> if you weren't and you came back, uh, thank you for coming back and looking at the whole thing, because you really need to know this. This is the start of learning how to design, designing your black and white, and, and it doesn't matter what medium you're using, really. Um, I you know oil painters that do thumbnails like this, um, pastel artists, watercolorists, acrylic painters. This is about designing your photograph um, and taking your photograph and designing it to become a painting and not to look like a painting 
not to look like a photo, but to maybe look like a beautiful painting. And even if you were doing this as a photograph, I would still make sure that your photograph is well designed. You know, so if you are doing a well designed photograph and you're doing it to photorealism, you'd still want the lights and darks to be well done, right? So this, even for them, this is an important thing, design element to know about is your black and white designs, your no tan of your picture. You need to know that that's a good design. And I don't care how and your design is or, or your um, the way you paint, your technique, whatever. It's, it's, uh, it's all about designing the photograph to be a great painting. All right. See you on Thursday. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel here. And I uh, hope they give you more tips like this. And I may even make them shorter and try to get them. I'll explain really well. But please... Go over this again. Really, I really need you to learn this. And so we'll talk about it on Thursday again. All right. Until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.